Okay, if you're someone new to this channel, I want to welcome you to the um, Spirit of Jehu channel. And today I want to go over three things that separate my walk from the walk of the Christian, as well as the walk of the Hebrew Israelite. I'll start with the Christian. For me, Christianity is based on Roman structure and Catholicisms. The Roman power structure, um, what they did is they would take over a people and they would adopt some of the customs, the religious customs of those people. So Christianity is no different. Of course, Jerusalem fell in 70 AD to the Roman Empire. The Romans, when they realized they could not stamp out um, the ways of the Jews to force them to follow the customs of the Romans, they then changed and said, well, we're Christians too, and we're like you. So this is how we're going to do it. And they forcefully made them um, follow the rules of the Romans. Now, Catholic, the Roman uh, Catholic Church is a hodgepodge of other religions of people they overtook. So you have a ton of paganism mixed into the Catholicism. Um, and that in itself is why anything that's connected to the Catholic Church and understand every single denomination of Christianity is a offshoot of the Catholic Church in some way. So first it was the Catholics, and they split off and it became the Protestants and the Catholics. And from the Protestant side, they broke off many, many, many times into all the different denominations that you see today. So many that there's like a church on every corner, literally. So there is a huge um, following. And they're pretty much all following the Catholic Church. Nowadays, when you talk to Christians, they actually lump in Catholics with the Christians. They consider themselves all the same. Catholic Church has um, crowned themselves as the basic kings of all things Christianity or Christian. They believe they are the foremost authority on all things Christian. And because they are just a hodgepodge of many different religions, it is no good. And anything that is connected to them is no good. Okay. Today, the Christian churches, they would be the false prophets that is in the, the word. Um, and I have a few scriptures, second Timothy three through four, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine instead to suit their own desires. They will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their eyes away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Second Peter two. Those false teachers only want your money, so they will use you by telling you lies. The judgment spoken against them long ago is still coming, and the ruin is certain. Second thing that sets me apart are people who follow the same path that I'm on. Not me. I'm not talking about myself personally. Um, I am, but I'm not. I'm talking about anyone who follows this path. Um, there's really not a name for it. 
I'm a, I consider myself a Hebrew. I do not want to be lumped with any group or any um, ideology today because there's nothing like following Yeshua HaMashiach in the most purest form. Everyone has perverted the way. Everyone has perverted Christianity. Everyone has perverted any um, thing you could think of to give it a name. All the names have been blasphemed. They all make y'all look bad. So I don't even subscribe to really anything. I simply call myself a Hebrew. Second, Christians ride the fence between the kingdom of Yah and the world. And by that, I mean, if you look at Christian music, you look at Christian people, there's no difference between Christians and the world, or let me say atheists, or any other religion in modern day. There's nothing different about them. Uh, and I'm talking about within the United States, within the Western world. I understand Muslims, of course, Christians don't look like Muslims, or Buddhists, or anything like that. But in the Western world, Christians look just like everyone else. They act just like everyone else. They are not a peculiar people, as the word says we're supposed to be. There's nothing about a Christian other than them claiming I'm a Christian that is um, appealing to someone who really is try is striving to follow the true ways of Yah. For instance, you look at um, Christian music. You have Christian rap music. It's not much different from worldly rap music, except they do mention Christ every now and again. They do loosely reference Bible verses. But it's still talking about me, my, I. It's all focused on themselves and focused on making money, not really speaking about Yah. In such a way. Now I know you have rappers like Bizzle and um, some of these newer guys. They do mention Yeshua or Jesus more often. They do mention scriptures more often. But it's all still self-centered. It's not all pointing to Yeshua. It's not all pointing to Yah. All right. Um. Christians, they um, tend to, when, when I say they ride the fence, um, the way they dress, the way they carry themselves, the way they speak, um, all those things, they're tangled up with the world still, too close. And we can look at Galatians 5, chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Overall, the Christian church is greedy. It's a money-making machine that robs communities. Um, there's a church on every corner. And ideally, there's nothing wrong with a church because we don't want everybody coming to our personal house, right? So a church is a nice um, place to meet that is not your personal home. But the problem with the church is it creates bills that you expect the church members to pay. So the church leader says, hey, I want to have a church where people can come and worship. Yeah, but I don't want to pay for it. So I'm going to get the people to pay for it. And I'm also going to make money off of it. So it becomes a money-making scheme of sorts. Um. In that sense, it represents the feet 
of the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. As a whole, the Christian church represents the feet of the statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Now, let's go to the Hebrew Israelite side. The first thing that separates me from the Hebrew Israelites or the Hebrew Israelites follow Torah only. They omit the power of the Holy Spirit. They omit the true power that Yeshua holds, that his name holds. They don't, they reference Yeshua, but they don't, um, they don't follow him wholeheartedly. They don't study his words. They don't study his, um, the gospels. So therefore they deny the testimony of Yah. Because Yeshua is the king of the Jews. He is the king of those who call themselves being in the kingdom of Yah. And if Yeshua is not the king, if he's not put in his right place as the king, then to you he's nothing. You can't say you trust him, you love him, and not follow his commandments. You cannot say you love him and trust him and not take his spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit also, it speaks of, um, it's a three-in-one thing. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And those three are one. Modern day um, Hebrew Israelites are the unbelieving Jews or the Pharisees in the New Testament. They follow the Old Testament Torah to the T. They do everything in modern day that we're supposed to do. They follow the commandments, the dietary law, as well as the feasts and festivals, which is amazing. But they omit the most important parts, which is Yeshua and the Holy Spirit. You have to understand our Yah broke the first covenant which is why we have a New Testament. Testament simply means covenant. So Old Testament is just the Old Covenant. New Testament is simply the New Covenant because there would be no need for a New Covenant if there were still an Old Covenant in place. So the Old Covenant was broken by our ancestors who could not keep the law, who could not do what the law stated they needed to do without following other religions without um, adding in things of the world into their worship, without just abandoning Yah to follow after the world. So with all those things, they broke the covenant so many times that Yah gave up on that covenant and started a new covenant. And you have to obey the rules of the new covenant. The rules of the new covenant states you have to have both the old covenant commandments, but Yeshua is now the high priest. Yeshua is now the Levite and the high priest. So a lot of the things that were done in the old covenant, such as animal sacrifice for our sins, have been taken on by Yeshua HaMashiach. His blood, his um, flesh bore those sins on the cross for our sins. And we can look at Romans 9, uh, 30 through 33. What shall we say then, that Gentiles who do not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness, even to even the righteousness of faith, but Israel pursuing the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness? Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. We can look at 1 John chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. This is he that came by water and blood, even Yeshua HaMashiach, not by water only, 
but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Second thing that separates what I am, my walk, from the Hebrew Israelite is that they work out of their flesh. Meaning they don't, they're not empowered by the Holy Spirit. They're simply doing everything from their own unction, from their own power, which they have amazing ideas. And going out into the streets and uh, teaching and drawing people in is amazing because that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. That is exactly what Yeshua called us to do. But you can't do it in your own power. You have to use the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of the Holy Spirit will show through in all of your actions, in the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, the way you live. Everything you do will show that you have the Holy Spirit within you. And that is what draws people. You see, you can plant the seed on the corner. You can water by having the classes, but it's the Holy Spirit that makes the plant grow. So that's another thing that they do, as well as, you know, in the same thing of working out of the flesh, you know, they're angry and it comes out in how they talk, it comes out in how they handle people. I've spoken to a few of the Hebrew Israelites and they all have the same spirit about them. They're angry at what happened to us through slavery. Now, let me mention two things about slavery. Number one, Yah spoke to Abraham and told him personally, your descendants will be slaves for 400 years. And then they will come out with great wealth. Well, we know now that um, slavery in Egypt in the Old Testament was not 400 years. That was only 200 some years. So there has never been a people in the history of the world who was enslaved for 400 years. Well, let me say enslaved and mistreated because it, it's a twofold thing. They had to be enslaved and mistreated for a total of 400 years solid without breaks. That only happened in the transatlantic slave trade. Now, I know the United States looks at when slavery happened in the United States. And they claim that it ended in 2019. That means all of us were slaves at one point who are alive today. But if you back it up and you bring it back to the 1500s, when slavery first started um, in Europe as well as in the Caribbean, because the Caribbean had slaves before the United States had slaves, because they pretty much came through the Caribbean. The same path the hurricanes take is the way that the slave ships drifting on the wind, using wind power, moved. So um, they had to come through South America first. So. Um, South America and the um, Caribbean all had slaves before the United States. So if you back it up to the 1500s, then you'll see that, you know, slavery was effectively over um, in the 1960s. Completely. So that means we've been free for a little while now. But we just haven't known it until now. Now we have, there's a great awakening and Yah is constantly awakening us, new people, to search for him. And so we are. Okay, so I got a scripture for you on that. And that's Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. The third thing that the Hebrew Israelite community have that's different from me, from my personal walk and from anyone who 
is like me is they use a show of intimidation to achieve results. So when you look at um, videos of the Sakari, videos of the IUIC, you're going to see them on street corners being very aggressive. You're going to see them using shows of force when they uh, marched um, in different areas, in different protests. They use a show of force. Uh, very similar to the NFAC, which was another fringe group that didn't last very long. Um, but the IUIC, they have real staying power. So do the Sakari. It's just that they are operating out of their flesh. And if they would come into the spirit, there will be some dangerous folks. And I would love to be part of it. So... What is it about me? I'm going to give you three things about my walk, about what y'all calls people like me, followers of the original way, as what they were called in the New Testament, followers of the way. Um, I just claim to be a Hebrew. I believe in following the commandments as given to Moses and Aaron at Mount Sinai. I believe in the testimony of Yeshua, Hamashiach, and the power of the Holy Spirit. That is what is different about me. That's the biggest difference. I believe in all of it. I believe wholeheartedly what the word of Yah says. Do I also believe that the word has been tampered with? Yes, I do. There's different versions of the Bible. And I understand that the King James Version is not the complete Bible because I also have other books, such as the book of Enoch um, and the, the other books, too. So the second thing that is different about me is I use the word of Yah as a checklist for how we're supposed to be living and how um, I look at it as we live in Yah's house. We're his children. Every house has rules and regulations. Everyone's mom is not going to allow them to just do whatever they want to do. So in order to not do whatever you want to do, you have to follow the house rules. Otherwise, you will be kicked out of the house. So when we look at the Christians, do the Christians follow all of Yah's rules? No, Yah said you have to be diligent. You have to make sure that you are following all my rules. You cannot just sprinkle a little Jesus on yourself and think you're following the rules and say, well, Jesus summed up all of the commandments in one commandment well no he didn't he did sum up the commandments but he did not replace them you see he said we're supposed to honor Yah honor God um, love him with all our heart mind soul spirit okay we're supposed to give ourselves wholly over to Yah but that's also following the first couple commands. And his second command was to treat other people as we would like to be treated. Which that sums up the other commands. It does not replace them. He's simply giving you a condensed version of all the commands. And then he added one to it. That we're to love each other as he loved the church. As he loved us. So, um, in doing that, he's adding one more. So, there's actually more than 10 commandments. The church says there's 10, but there's actually more. If you go back and you look at um, Exodus, you can look it up in Deuteronomy and also Leviticus. You will see that 
when Yah gave the command. There are more than ten there in those original commands. And then you add the one where Yeshua added. And you have about thirteen. Some people can look at that and they see actually more, more like 15, 16 actual commandments. All right. The third thing that separates me from a Christian and a Hebrew Israelite is I am spirit led and spirit fed. Okay. And what that simply means is the word of Yah is more than is more than a guide. It is my life. Some would say I'm a fanatic for this word. Some would say I am a true Bible thumper. Huh? But the thing is, y'all called us to live a certain way. And I'm going to live exactly the way he tells us to. I am 100% dependent on the Holy Spirit to guide me and tell me where to go. Yah will tell you where he wants you to live. Not exactly what house, but what area to live in. Yah will tell you what he wants you to do to further his kingdom. And if you do it, then that's imputed to you as faith. Because you heard his word, you stepped out on it, and you accomplished it. Exactly what Abraham did. Now, um, I also, in being spirit-fed and spirit-led, it makes me the clay that is in Nebuchadnezzar's dream on a statue. So I told you that Christians were the feet in Nebuchadnezzar's statue dream. I am the clay. I am what... um, Yah says he's going to use to knock over the power structure of Babylon. Babylon meaning the Western world, Europeans, Americans, their ways. That literally is the old Roman Empire, reshaped, reimagined. That is also Babylon reshaped, reimagined, and modernized. So when you look at my life, you look at the things that I speak on, this is my real life. I do this all day, every day. I talk about the word with my wife and my family all day, every day. We're always in our word. We're always in our Bible looking for more knowledge, looking for more understanding, trying to trim off more of the world constantly. So much so that when we get out in the world, it causes stomach aches, it causes headaches, it causes different, um, you feel stabbings, you feel different things throughout your body physically. Because we're so tied to the spirit of Yah, so disconnected from the world. The world has a a physical effect on us. And I can see how in the book of Enoch, Enoch became a recluse. He stopped wanting to go out into the world. And he was a teacher of kings. And he was a teacher of the noblemen. So all the high-ranking people of the whole world at that time would come to Enoch to learn from him, to learn the ways of Yah. But he became so sensitive to the ways of the world, or to Yah, that the ways of the world, they he couldn't stand it. So he became like a recluse. He stayed in, in his own little area. It got so bad to where he would come out one day out of the year. The rest of the year, he was in Yah's presence. He was away from the world. And to be honest with you, that's exactly what Yah is calling us to do. He's calling us to withdraw from the world. He's calling us to not be so involved 
with the world. Let the world go downhill. It's going to go downhill anyway. Our job is simply to be like Noah, telling everybody, hey, the kingdom of Yah is at hand. Come over here, be saved. It is going to rain one day. It is going to be a flood one day. And just as in Noah's day, that was foreign talk. What are you talking about rain? It ain't never rained. What you describing water from the sky? Water doesn't fall from the sky. It never rained. Water simply came up from the ground and then came back down every day like clockwork. It didn't rain. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know what a flood was. Water just stayed where they were supposed to be. So someone telling them something so radical, I could see how they would laugh at them until it actually started raining. And then everyone was beating at the door, beating on the boat, trying to get in, but it was too late. See, when we say the kingdom of Yah is at hand, y'all come on in, jump aboard. You don't know when your personal end is. Everyone says, well, the world hasn't ended yet. Nothing has happened catastrophically. Well, it doesn't have to. But one day you're going to die. One day you're going to meet Yah. And you will not have anything to stand on. He's going to say, I didn't know you. Christians, he's going to look at a Christian and say, I didn't know you. And they're going to be the ones that say, wait, hold on. But we did all these things in your name. And he says, yeah, you did them in my name. But you didn't know me. And I didn't know you. You were simply in a fan club. Okay. Christians are in Yah's fan club. They read his biography. They understand what he says and how he says it. But it doesn't mean they can call Yah up and he'll answer the phone. So we look at it like a celebrity or a president or something of that nature. And we say, well, these people, I know these people. I know Trump. Look at what he's done. I've seen everything he's done. I've seen him on TV. I went to his rallies. I, you know, I spoke with him. I shook his hand. Blah, blah, blah. But that man don't know you. You couldn't possibly pick up the phone and call him right now. And he'll pick up his cell phone and say, hello. <laughs> That's the difference between being in a fan club. And knowing someone, you see, when Yeshua says, I never knew you, they did powerful things in his name. All the exact same things that the second group did. And the second group said, well, when did we do those things? We were just being ourselves. We weren't doing anything different. We weren't going out purposely doing anything. Yah says, well, when you did it to the least of these, you did it unto me. You see, we know Yah. We know Him. And what we do is just second nature. Those who walk the same walk as me, like I said, this Bible, this Word, is so ingrained in us that we operate in it and it's like second nature. It's like speaking in your native language. It's easy. You don't have to think about it. Now, I'm not just trying to beat up on Christians and Hebrew Israelites, okay? What I'm trying to do is say there's work to be done. If you are a Christian visiting this page and you listen this long, congratulations. Thank you. But there's something you need to do. Number one, you need to count the cost and understand what you're giving up here. You see, when the children of Israel were at Mount Sinai, and they were told the, the commandments, they were told what's expected of them, they just said, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll do it, we'll do it, without understanding what they were doing. You see, as a Christian, when you went up to that altar and you gave your life to Yeshua, to Jesus, 
and you said, forgive me of my sins. You weren't just simply saying, forgive me of my sins. You were, in effect, saying, I give up living the way I want to live. I realize that the way I was living is sinful. And I give up my sinful ways in exchange for your righteousness. Now, that righteousness cost you. It didn't cost you anything to say the prayer. Just like it didn't cost the children of Israel at Mount Sinai to say, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do everything that you called us to do. But this next part is what caused them a lot of heartache and pain. They didn't take those words seriously because they did not understand what those words meant at them in the moment. But Yah, it was like signing a contract and Yah held them accountable for signing that contract. Maybe no one has told you Christians. Or you Hebrew Israelites, no one has told you that what you signed up for is a lifelong devotion, 100% dedicated to Yah. If you look at the Ten Commandments, he says, first off, I am the God who brought you up out of Egypt. See, this world we can say is Egypt. And Yah says, I brought you up out of Egypt. Remember all the things I had to do to Pharaoh to get him to release you? Yeah, I had to do that for each and every one of you. I had to go to the enemy and I had to take you out of the enemy's hands. There was a prophet, I can't remember his name at the moment, where Satan was standing next to him and Satan was accusing him. And Yah says, hold on, didn't I take this one? Out of the fire? This one was a goner. I took him already out of the fire to be my people, to be my prophet. And Christian and Hebrew Israelite, I'm telling you both, he has taken you out of the fire to be called his people. You need to really look at the word of Yah and start following it. You're not following me. I'm not looking for followers. I'm a nobody. I don't even show my face on the video because I, I don't want people to, I don't want to become a personality. I want the words that I say to mean more than what I look like. I want the words that I say that are from the Bible, from the word of Yah, not my own words. I want them to mean something to you. That is what this channel is all about. This channel is, is not, you know, it would be nice to be um, monetized because I often think it would be nice to build tiny homes um, for homeless people. I think it would be nice to build tiny homes for um, single mothers with children. You know, I think it'll be nice to be able to do some of the things that we're called to do on an ongoing basis. Um, I do those things sporadically on my own, but it'll be nice to do bigger things. Um, being monetized does offer that. But that is not my only hope in this. Um, like I said, I'm looking for my 100. I'm looking for 100 people that are willing to say, I'm going to follow this way. You see, something personal about me is, at the beginning of this, I told y'all, I would only follow him in spirit and in truth. And that is according to the Bible. But I did not want to get caught up in any religion. I'm not a religious person. I don't want to be in no religion. I don't want to be just following a bunch of rules for nothing. Second thing I told y'all is I want power. Real power. I want to know that there is real tangible evidence that this thing is real. While I'm alive, I don't want to blindly follow a God that says, hey, you just do all this in, in blind faith. And when you die, then we'll, we'll square up. No, 
Yah gives me dreams, visions, feelings. Um, his spirit gives me power. I can feel it coming in. I can feel it going out. Those things are tangible, real things that tell me I'm on the right path right now. I don't have to walk my whole life and then find out I was doing something wrong all along. So I'm telling you guys, when you walk this walk, there is instant notification when you mess up. There is instant notification. Even before you mess up, when you're on the verge of messing up, he tells you. There's this gut-wrenching feeling inside of you that says, no, 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 don't do that. And you have to literally go past the pain, physical pain, in order to sin now. See, I'm at such a level in my faith that I feel like Paul. I am a total slave to Christ and to the Holy Spirit. You see, because they will notify you when you're about to mess up. And because I have already pushed away everything from this world, I follow every unction of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to be spirit-led, spirit-fed. I follow every unction of the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit of Yah dwells on something, I'm there. When the Spirit of Yah says, hey, go over here, I go over there. This is my life for real. And if you want this to be your life for real, follow these basic things. Go back to the book of Exodus. Look at it. Read it. Understand it. Understand the commandments. Understand what they're asking you to do and start to do them. Use Saturday as your day of worship. Saturday is the Sabbath, not Sunday. When you start operating in these things, it's all going to start making sense to you. And Yah will prove to you that what you're doing is right. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to guess. He will prove to you that this is right. So until the next video, have a great one.